This is a continuation of the video called OOP number one, where we created a console C Sharp application called OOP Fun. And then we created a brand new class by right mouse clicking on the project and choosing Add Class. And then we changed uh, the title of that class we made to be Student, named it that. And then we added four instance variables or attributes that describe uh, an object when you use this class to create it. And the attributes are public, meaning they're visible everywhere. Back in the main program for this project, I deleted a bunch of code that I had before. And so now we just have this line, which says create a variable called OStud of type student. And we create the variable by using the word new, the class name, parentheses, parentheses. The object now gets created for us. And we can start working with the different attributes in that object. And I showed earlier in the other video that you could say ostude.name or age or gender or GPA, and you have access to that variable. Now, let's say we had 50 students in the course that we want to work with, and I want to make an object for each student. Each student would have its own identity, meaning it occupies its own piece of memory. And I'd have to have 50 student objects. I'd have to say, student, o stud one and then I'd have to do that again and say, o stud 2 and o stud 3 and o stud 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 50, and that'd be a real pain to do. So instead of doing that, I want to create an array. Now, if you don't know what an array is, go look at the previous videos I've made, and we want to make an array of student objects. This means we'd only have to have one variable. And we use that, or we do it, by saying student, make an array, square bracket, square bracket, AO for array of objects, student, you can call it whatever you want, equals new, you say student, square bracket again, and then you could specify 50. That would make an array called AO student that has 50 elements in it, and each element would have to be a student object. Now remember, if I wanted to do an int, you'd say int square bracket, square bracket, or string square bracket. Well, I don't want ints or strings. I want objects. So you say the word student square bracket, give it a variable name, and then actually make the array. Now, since that is an array, I need to put a value inside of each position. I could say AO student bracket zero bracket, which accesses the first element of that array that someday will hold a student object. But remember, how do you make a student object? You have to use the word new. So we say equals new student. That would store a brand new student object in the first position of the array. You could do that same thing and say, let's go put another object. And we'll put it in position 1, position 2, position 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 50. That's a pain. So instead of doing that, let's create a variable called iCount. And let's go ahead and give it the value of 50. And I'm actually going to declare that variable before I try to create the array. And instead of using the number 50 there, I'm going to say the word I count, that's the variable, right? And then let's create another variable, or we can actually do it in the loop, for i num equals zero. As long as i num is less than i count, we're going to go ahead and increment i num. This loop will load up the array of student objects. I have to create the variable or declare the variable inum. So we'll say int inum. Now we can do a console.write line and say enter student name. Now I want to actually store that student name to the student object that I just made. But remember, we already said we created an array of student objects. But there's no objects in it yet. 
we never saw the word new student parenthesis parenthesis. All we saw was the square brackets, which means we made an array. So first thing we need to do in our loop is we need to make that student object and store it to the array. AO student square bracket inum. First time through, inum is zero. So we're saying go to the position zero of the array and we want to put an object there. How do you make an object? New class name parenthesis parenthesis. We now have an object in position zero. Enter the student name. AO student square bracket inum dot name. Name is the attribute that we made back in our student class of type string. So I could just load that up now through the keyboard by saying console dot read line. This loop would create 50 objects inside of each position of the array and then load up each of their name attributes from the keyboard. Let's go ahead and set a breakpoint right here. And instead of 50, because I don't want to have you sitting here all day long, I'm going to do three. Notice I only have to change it one time because I'm using that variable later on in the program. Let's go ahead and run it and see if we can load up three variables which will be objects inside the array. First name, Mickey, student name, Donald, student name, Minnie. Let's come back to the program. Let's take a look at that array. I put my cursor on it, click on the arrow, and it says in position zero, you have a student object. Position two or one, you have a student object. Position two, a student object. Let's look at position one. Position one says, you have four attributes for that object. Zero, zero, null, and Mickey. Let's look at two. Zero, zero, null, Donald. Three, zero, zero, null, mini. By using a class and using attributes associated with the class, I only have to have one variable now, and I can represent as many pieces of data that I want. For every object that I create, by saying new class name parenthesis parenthesis, there are four attributes associated with each object. And then I store that object inside the array, and I now have access to each attribute. AO student square bracket array position dot age equals 10. You could get that from the keyboard if you wanted. By the time you're done, that array has every value loaded up if you wanted to load them up through the keyboard. Now, once we load them all up, and I hope you realize you could load up every single one of those attributes, well, how would you print them off? Same thing. We can, in fact, we could use that same for loop. I'll copy it, paste it right here. And then instead of creating the variable again, everything is there. Let's go ahead and array name, AO student, square bracket, inum, which gets the object in the array position, and print off the name. And we don't want to recreate the object. So this loop, now that we've loaded up the array of all the objects, we can come back through and print them all off. Why? Because in each element of the object, we put a student object in that array, and then we've modified or worked with the attributes for that object inside that array. And over here, we now say print off position zero of the array, which is an object, grab its name attribute, print again. One, grab its name for the object. Position two, grab its name for the object. And that's how you can do an array of objects.